Welcome to a video on multiplying and dividing rational expressions. What you'll find is multiplying rational expressions is just like multiplying fractions. So the basic rule is to find the product of two rational expressions, you multiply the numerators together and then you multiply the denominators together. However, by now we know our product must be in simplified form. So in order to recognize the common factors in the product, we'll write the numerators and denominators in factored form to simplify before we multiply. Let's go ahead and try this using two fractions. We're going to write each of these in prime factored form. 7 is prime. 15 would be 3 times 5. 20 is 4 times 5, and 4 is 2 times 2. So we have 2 times 2 times 5. 21 is 3 times 7. So we know from the video on simplifying rational expressions, if we have a common factor between any numerator and any denominator, it simplifies to 1. So here we have a 7 over 7, that would equal 1, and then a 5 over a 5, that would equal 1. There are no additional common factors, so now the product will be in simplified form. So our numerator will be 2 times 2, that's 4, and our denominator will be 3 times 3, which is equal to 9. So we'll follow the same procedure on this next problem. Even though there are some shortcut methods for simplifying here before we multiply, I'm going to go ahead and expand all of these. So 5x cubed y would be 5 times 3 factors of x times y. 4y would be 2 times 2 times y. 6y would be 2 times 3 times y. 25x squared would be 5 times 5 times x times x. So now we'll identify the common factors between the numerators and denominators. So, so here we have 2 over 2, here's a y over y, here's a 5 over 5, here we have x over x, another x over x. Looks like we have everything. Let's go ahead and multiply now. x times 3 times y would be 3xy, and our denominator would be 2 times 5, which equals 10. Let's go ahead and take a look at one more example of multiplication. So here we have to factor everything first. These are all trinomials with a leading coefficient of 1, so they'll all factor into two binomials if they do factor. So looking at this numerator, we're going to have y's in the first position. The factors of negative 3 that add to positive 2, plus 3 minus 1. In our denominator, we have y in the first position, the factors of negative 5 that add to positive 4, plus 5 minus 1. In our second fraction, we have factors of y again in the first position. The factors of negative 10 that add to negative 3, minus 5 plus 2. And then in this last one, the factors of positive 6 that add to positive 5, plus 3 plus 2. Now we simplify. Here we have a y minus 1 over y minus 1. Here's a y plus 3 over y plus 3, and a y plus 2 over a y plus 2. So now we have our product in simplified form. We have y minus 5 over y plus 5. Again, be careful here. We cannot simplify this. These terms are attached by addition or subtraction. And in order to simplify, they have to be connected by multiplication. OK, let's go and take a look at division now. The main thing to remember about division of rational expressions is that we convert them to multiplication. So instead of dividing by w over z, we will multiply by the reciprocal or multiply by z over w. Once we convert the problem to multiplication, we will follow the same steps on the previous three examples. Let's go ahead and try an example. So on this problem, the first thing I notice is it might be helpful to have this first term in fraction form. Next, we'll go ahead and rewrite this as a multiplication problem. So this is the same as x squared minus 5x minus 6 over 1 times the reciprocal of this fraction. So we have x plus 6 over x squared minus 1. Now we'll factor everything, simplify, and then multiply. So for this first numerator, we'll have two binomials where the first term will be x. The factors of negative 6 that add to negative 5, that's minus 6 plus 1. x plus 6 does not factor x squared minus 1 is a difference of squares, so we have x plus 1 times x minus 1. Now we simplify. We have a factor of x plus 1 on top 
and x plus one on the bottom. That simplifies. So we're left with x minus six times x plus six, all divided by the quantity x minus one. I think we have time for one more example. Let's go ahead and convert this to a multiplication problem first. If you take a look at these terms, this numerator here looks a little strange because we're used to having the variable first and the constants second. So it might be helpful at this time to rearrange these terms. If we rearrange them in their current form, we'd have negative z cubed plus one. We always like to have a positive leading coefficient when we're factoring. So what we can do is factor out a negative. If we factor out a negative, it's going to change the sign of this z cubed. So here it's minus z cubed. It would be positive z cubed. And instead of a positive one, we'd have minus one. Notice if we distribute the negative sign or, or multiply by a negative one, it does match the original numerator over z squared. Instead of division, we'll multiply by the reciprocal. So we have z to the fourth over z squared minus one. Let's go ahead and factor everything now. Now this is a difference of cubes. So this is one of those factoring formulas that you may want to review. The first binomial would be z minus one. The next factor will be a trinomial where we have z squared and then it's plus z times one, that's plus z, plus one squared would be one. To factor z squared, I'll write that as z times z. z to the fourth would be four factors of z. z squared minus one is a difference of squares. z plus one, z minus one. Now we simplify. There's a z minus one over a z minus one. Here we can simplify out some factors of z, z over z and z over z. And it looks like we have everything. Let's go ahead and multiply now. You can see our fraction will be negative. And our numerator is going to be this trinomial times z squared. So we'll put the z squared first. And our denominator is z plus one. Okay, that's going to do it for this video. I hope you found it helpful.